Once you tell the story and the student, the learner de de develops a relationship, they are interested in remembering this name and because they have developed a relationship, they remember it. So, so that is what stories did for us. The other thing very quickly we noticed was we had read in newspapers that our fifth graders read at the level of a second grade. So most of us, which we found to be true. And so my husband had been collecting books, especially children's book, for the last 10, 12 years now, maybe more. We have an excellent collection of Hindi children's literature as well as English. So we decided this is what we will share with our kids. Because we have to uh, help them read so that they can find out what, was, what is going in somebody else's mind because that's what books give. What is going in somebody else's imagination? What is happening around our world? There are very different, interesting ways to learn reading. It, is, it will not come only from the back. It can come from anywhere. So that's what we did. We took books, we shared with them. Uh, the kids loved it. Every day we would take books, either we would read to them or they would read and we would listen. And we found out that they are interested in that. If they are interested in reading, it's just that they are not getting the right material. They were interested in learning to read. So we kept doing that. In fact, there was one girl that Sarah really worked with. Uh, she was a fourth grader, did not even know her ABCDs yet. She was having trouble even there. He worked with her continuously on one of month for, for that year. We still work with her. And she actually started reading books. They were very basic books, but she started reading. It was you know, our winning moment, we felt that we are able to make a difference. So, one thing we realized, if we spend time one-on-one -on -one with our learners, what happens is, they feel valued, they feel that somebody cares that, that, that they need to learn, or they, that they are interested, the, book, the books were interesting to them, so that made a difference. Another thing that we did was, uh, I love mathematics. That's I just love playing with math, playing with numbers. So it was very easy to do this for us. If you tell a child, uh, what is 3 times 6? That means you have to memorize the table of 3, 4, 5, 6, whatever you need. 3 times 6, they won't be able to tell you directly. But if you told them, I have to buy candies for you, I want to give you 3 candies each and you have 6 of you. How many candies do I need? to buy. Suddenly this is very useful. They want their three candies, right? So they will add three plus three plus three plus three plus three. Plus three. They will add it six times and then they would say that is it is 18. And then they told them, you know, you could have done it quicker. Three times six is 18 because we are adding three six times. Suddenly multiplication is very relevant. It's useful for them because they can calculate the candies faster. So once you told them to tell us, they want to learn. Another thing that was a major hit was Sudoku. I think all of us have tried it. Sudoku comes in almost all newspapers now. It started probably just a few years ago, I think. It is a matrix that, uh, it's a 9 by 9 matrix where each space has to be uniquely filled uh, based on some rules. It is a lot about logic and numbers. So we decided this is what we were going to try. So uh, for our young learners, this matrix also comes in a 4 by 4, a 6 by 6, an 8 by 8, and a 9 by 9. So we started with a 4 by 4 and 8 matrix. We would print it out in small, uh, this A3 size paper, one fourth of it. We will take it to school. We just left it there. Kids would pick it up and they wanted to fill it. So we told them the rules and they started filling it themselves. Initially it was a bit difficult, but with time, and if they fell in trouble, they would come and ask us, we would help them out. So once they became good at um, 4 by 4, they would want the 6 by 6 and 9 by 9. And it was an achievement because now they could show it up to their parents. Because it comes in newspapers, right? <coughs> so uh, once one did learn, uh, the other people would also want to know, and it did not matter what age you were. Because numbers are numbers, whoever is better at logic will solve it faster. 
So fourth grader might be teaching a fifth grader or a third grader. So here, learning was happening, but it was happening within peers, within students. We were not teaching. They were learning on their own. They were learning because each child uniquely looks at logic, would solve it in different ways. And if you had solved it in one way, somebody else will come try this way. Maybe this will work if it's not working out. So the learning was happening within peers. Uh, as I said, uh, we had started sharing books, books that they could check out. This is how our first library started. We have done several libraries since then in different schools, and we are continuing this on. We would check out books. The books would go home. They would read. Their siblings would read. Some of them were first generation learners, and if their parents knew how to read, they, they would read and they would tell the stories to their grandparents. So, learning was happening. They were reading out to their parents, they were reading to their grandparents or to their siblings. They started asking for more books. And that is how this library began. We have done thousands of checkouts since then. The one thing that we really had trouble was art. We would take those sudokus and at the back side of the page was blank. So we would say, you know, there are crayons, there are colored pencils. If you want, you can color or you can draw whatever you want. You know, initially there were two things they would draw. One was an Indian flag on those three steps, in perfectly rectangular as if the wind was going at 100 miles per hour. And the other thing they would draw is a heart with an arrow going through it. <laughs> You know, this was the first thing we kind of got strict on. We actually banned it. These are the two things you cannot draw. And suddenly all the pencils stopped. Somehow, I realized that in our education system, we had, a, we had somehow created a space where they did not feel, feel safe to draw. Where they felt there was a risk at drawing because you because what you drew, somebody would laugh or would say that this is not how a tree looks like. You could draw, a, we have to make them realize that you could draw your tree any way you want. You could color it purple if you want because it is your tree, it is your imagination. Art is an expression of our imagination, not somebody else's imagination. A teacher will not tell you that you can draw a peacock with your hand and make a face on it. That is one way to draw a peacock. Everyone's imagination about the peacock is different. So this is what we had to make them realize this is a space where it's safe to draw. You can take risk and fail. It's okay to fail. Because fail from failure at this stage would come learning. At, or at any stage from failure comes learning. And Somehow we are not giving our kids a chance to fail. Neither are we giving ourselves. And that is why we are making our lives and their lives so stressful. We have to take them off of it. And you know, we did a lot of building, building, making puzzles, building blocks. We did a lot of experimenting also and we are continuously improving this process. You know, we can teach a kid how, what is a magnet? You can say it's a north pole and a south pole that magnet would attract some things and if you put two magnets, opposites attract. But you know, this is all bookish knowledge. It doesn't really help. Give them a magnet. This is what we take. We give them a magnet. We ask them to explore. Touch the wall with the magnet. Touch it on the window. Touch it on the glass ceiling. Touch it on nails. Touch it on everything. Come back and tell us what happens. Put two magnets together, flip them around, tell us what happens. Because this would be their learning. They would come back and they will tell you, you know, magnet doesn't tell you that this, this is my north, this is my south. Magnet doesn't care what we call north and south, we could call it Sima or Rima, we could call anything. These are just names. The learning comes from what actually the magnet does. They came back and told, you know, uh, it works on nails <coughs> and it works on whatever they could find on uh, latches and then they would ask what is it made of and then, that's how they would come to said that it was their learning that it works, it attracts iron and nothing else. 
they put two magnets together, they said, oh, one side, they, they stick to each other, the other side, whatever I do, they don't want to. Now you can explain whatever all this, that this and this has, you can share your learning with them. But this is what they need to know. You can give them a complex glass. This is what we did. We gave them a complex glass. Lens. We call it a lens, right? We gave them, just go explore. They came, came back and they would say, oh, I could burn paper with it. You can burn dry leaves with it. This is magical. Then we asked, you know, flat glass on the windows doesn't burn anything inside the house. What is this lens doing? You don't have to teach them, oh, there is a focal crown point, all the sun rays converge at one point, and then that is a focal point, that is what it was. Who cares? So they will learn it later. But first, what is the magic of the complex lens? So these are the things we did. So and this is these are the things that we want to do. And that is how our learning spaces and libraries are doing that. So the message I want to give is let's not pay attention. Let's not focus on teaching. Teaching is important, I'm not saying that. Teaching is important, but let's focus on <coughs> learning. It's the learner. The learner chooses what they want to learn. So let's present in a way that the learner wants to learn. They will choose. They may choose art, they may choose science, they may choose anything. Let them choose. We have to help facilitate the process. We are only facilitators. We are not teachers. We cannot shove it down their throat. If they don't want to, it, it's all effort wasted. This is kids of Sambhavna. They are not enrolled here. They come on their own will. We don't ask them to come. They want to come. And we all invite you that this space is one for you also. Come, learn with us, have fun, be challenged. This is a space you can fail and learn and learn again. Thank you so much for your time.